Greetings and welcome to another episode of Trippy Food and another installment of My Condiments to the Chef. And this is also, um, I can't say this is actually a new thing that we're doing, but we have kind of a new name for it. And it's, it's, uh, hopefully this will be a regular thing. We're gonna call this Viewer's Choice. And we're calling it Viewer's Choice because on our Facebook page, in the community page, Facebook page, um, we have a pinned article called The Suggestion Box. And in that suggestion box, our viewers can go in there and they can make suggestions as to things that they'd like to see us review. So Miguel Rangel had left a suggestion saying that he wanted to see us do Heinz 57 versus HP sauce. And I thought, while we're at it, let's just make this an epic steak sauce episode. So that, that's what we're gonna do. So this is a viewer's choice recommended by Miguel Rangel. And we're gonna do, so I decided I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and, and we're gonna do A1, we're also gonna do HP, we're also going to do Worcestershire sauce and also Heinz 57. So Heinz 57, A1, HP, and Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. And I say Lee and Perrin's because there's different brands of Worcestershire sauce, but this was the original one. And that is how you pronounce it, Worcestershire. So it's like the city of Worcester. It's Worcester in the UK, not Worcester, Massachusetts. And uh, it's the Shire is like the neighborhood, the village. However, um, it's uh, but it's pronounced Worcestershire, not Worcestershire, just like Lancashire, right? Okay, so these are very very different. Now they're not some of these are not necessarily steak sauces. Some of these are basically designed for bases for soups, stews, uh, you know, uh, other things that you would cook with. But they can all be put on. Uh, a, you know, steak or whatever have you, french fries if you want. So we're gonna, let's see, we'll start with, um, well, we'll just, we'll just work our way this way. So we're gonna start with A1. Some of these are very old. A1 was established in 1862, so it's been around since then. Uh, the picture on the front shows it on a burger. So that's just one application that you can do of it. So we're gonna, we're gonna put it on this delicious ribeye. So let's cut off a piece of that. Oh, that cuts like butter. Nice and pink on the inside. And I recommend that if you if you buy one of these, and it, maybe it's been sitting on the shelf for a little bit, just shake it up a little bit. Because sometimes they settle, especially the Worcestershire sauce. All right, here we go. It's A1, established 1862. Uh, ingredients on this one, tomato, so some of these are tomato based and tomato heavy, this one is. So the ingredients are tomato puree, uh, high fruit fructose corn syrup, which is sad, but that's okay. Vinegar, salt, raisin paste, crushed orange puree, spices including celery seed, dried onion, xanthan gum, dried garlic, caramel color, potassium sorbate. Uh, so interesting stuff. Uh, made in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania by International Gourmet Specialties. Uh, also Heinz, Heinz 57. Heinz is made in Pittsburgh as well. As a matter of fact, yep, they have a little pickle logo on their Heinz logo. So here we go. A1. It's tangy. I do you get that vinegar taste? It's not overpowering. Nice taste from the tomatoes. I was concerned it would be ultra sweet because of the high fructose corn syrup. That's not too bad. It's pretty tasty. Okay, so that was a thumbs up. Again, savory, um, tangy, nice. All right, so next we're gonna do Heinz 57. Heinz has been around since the 1800s as well. You know, located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This one contains tomato puree, so this one is tomato-based as well. Uh, high fructose corn syrup, distilled white vinegar, malt vinegar, contains barley, salt, the modified food starch, raisin, juice concentrate, mustard flour, soybean oil, turmeric, spices, apple puree, uh, potassium sorbate, sodium benzoate, caramel color, garlic powder, onion powder, natural flavors. So the, this seems to be different from the A1 in that this one has, they both have raisins in it. This one has mustard flour, which I don't believe the other one does. This one has turmeric and apple puree in it, which the other one doesn't. So this one's a little bit different. To me, though, with those ingredients, it sounds like it's going to be sweeter, but we'll see.
That one's really thick. I want to be careful that it doesn't just, you know, gush out all over the plate. But it's very thick. Here we go. Most of these, if you go to their website, they have recipes for things that you can make with them. Also, the Pride of Pittsburgh. Mm. This one is less tangy, not as savory, really heavy on the tomato flavor. Maybe there's more um, tartness to it than tanginess. There's some sweetness, but it's not like sugary sweet. That one's pretty good too. That one, that one definitely does, it does taste like, it does taste like a, you know, tomato based sauce. So this one's heavier on the tomato, I think, than the A1. All right. Let's do the Worcestershire again next. And typically Worcestershire is a ingredient for things like stews and stuff, but you could use it as a steak sauce, which we're going to do right now. These have very different ingredients. So Worcestershire sauce has distilled white vinegar, molasses, sugar, water, no high fructose corn syrup, which is a good thing. It does have molasses in it, which is different. Water, salt, onions, anchovies. There's another big difference, anchovies. This doesn't have tomato in it. Has garlic, cloves, tamarind extract, that's different. Uh, natural flavorings and chili pepper extract. So this one's gonna have some spice to it, I imagine, because it has chili pepper extract. So that one's very different. Lee and Perrins has been around for a long time as well. They've been around since 1837. A lot of these have been around for a long time. And Lee and Perrins is made uh, it was typically, it was first originally made in the UK. It is now, this one is from Lee and Perrins Incorporated in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh seems to be a big place for these sauces. This one's gonna be, it's a little bit um, more liquidy. Liquidy, if that's a real word. Let's try that. Now, anchovies are an ingredient in here, but it doesn't taste like anchovies. It doesn't have that, that fishy, salty flavor that you get from anchovies. It's kind of like, like a slight fish sauce taste, but like I said, it doesn't have that, that fishy saltiness that eating, you know, eating an anchovy does. This one's a little bit more mellow completely different flavor profile because it doesn't have the tomato in it. It has a sweetness to it. Obviously it has molasses, sugar, and tamarind, which is which is typically kind of sweet and and tart. Um, but it's 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 lighter, it's more mellow, I think. It's like a you know an aged kind of thing. Um, that one's really good too. Alright, so last and not least is the HP steak sauce. Now, it's funny because on the bottle, there's a picture of Big Ben, and Big Ben has scaffolding around it. So the label says, HP sauce commemorates 160th anniversary of Big Ben, Great Britain's best known bell. Big Ben is having a spruce up, meaning it won't be regularly ringing out until 2021, which means that this bottle or this label was made before 2021, and it is now 2023 that we are enjoying this. So I don't know if it's been bottled for two years, or uh, they just haven't changed the label, but you know that's pretty funny. This has been around for a while. This is a staple in the UK. You usually find it on tables when you go to a you know a pub or anything. You'll find the HC, HP sauce on the, on the table. And we're gonna try that. I think, if I remember correctly, they refer to HP as a brown sauce. Okay, that one's thick as well. So the Worcestershire sauce is the only one that's kind of on the thin side. Okay, let's try this. This one has tomatoes, malt vinegar, molasses, glucose, fructose, 
syrup, spirit vinegar, sugar, dates, modified corn flour, rye, flour, salt, spices, flavoring, and tamarind. So this one also has tamarind in it. This one has dates, which is different. This one, you can really taste the vinegar. Not so much you get that, that acetic acid burn from the vinegar, but the vinegar flavor really stands out on this one. They're all really good. Um, wow. So I guess I would have to rate them based on how they taste or how they complement the meat, just use as a sauce. I have to say I kind of like the A1 the best. I like the A1 the best on the sauce. They're all very good. They all get thumbs up as far as you know flavor and, and uh, what they bring to it. But the one I think I like the most is the A1. The one I think I like the least is probably the Heinz 57. And it's not that it's bad. It's just like I like it the least. It's um, To me, it's kind of like, you know, like a vinegary tomato paste. It's almost like, like um, you know, a spicy ketchup, a more spicy ketchup. So, um, so this one I, I like the least, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It just means I like it the least. They all get thumbs up. They're all very good. So uh, most large groceries carry all four of these. I recommend that you get out there and try those. Try them on different things. Like, like I said, try them on french fries, try them on burgers, uh, try it on meat, try, try it when you're making chili or making a, a stew or something along those lines. Just put a little bit of that in it and see what you can come up with. I would appreciate if you could put down in the comments if you've tried it on something else, you know, what your thoughts are. Uh, also, if you've tried these and you get a different take on it than I did, which is you know extremely possible, then, uh, then also please let me know that down below. But when you get out to get these, just remember that it's crazy out there, so please be careful. Take care of yourselves, take care of others, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for checking out Trippy Food. If you enjoyed watching that video half as much as I did making it, well then I enjoyed it twice as much as you did. And if that's the case, you'll probably like this video right here. And if not, check out this video right here. That one's a little bit different. Either way, leave a comment down below. And be sure to subscribe by clicking on the Trippy Food icon right here. Glad you could make it, and we hope to see you again soon.